gonna play hide and clap? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 21 best horror movies of each year. Places, everyone. We are live. If it's in a word or it's in a look, you can't get rid of the Babadook. I want to play a game. Here's what happens if you lose. For this list, we'll be looking at the very best major horror movie released every year, beginning with 2000. Supernatural horror, psychological thrillers, horror comedies, all subgenres will be considered. Do we miss your favorite horror movie in any given year? Share it in the comments below. Now, let's get our spooky on. 2000 American Psycho I have all the characteristics of a human being. Flesh, blood, skin, hair but not a single clear, identifiable emotion. To mark the dawn of the new millennium, New Line Cinema unleashed creative teenage carnage with Final Destination. The film cleaned up at the box office and would go on to spawn numerous sequels, but no horror movie released in 2000 was more terrifyingly captivating than American Psycho. Based on the novel by Brett Easton Ellis and boasting a star-making performance from Christian Bale, this genre-bending film takes us on a twisted trip into the mind of an investment banker, Patrick Bateman. Because it's not just about the pleasures of conformity and the importance of trends, it's also a personal statement about the band itself. Hey, Paul! Serving as a scathing critique of consumerism and the business world, American Psycho is bloody, chilling, and darkly funny. It's also got some truly unforgettable monologues, which have inspired countless parodies, references, and homages over the last two decades. Because it's not just a great character study, but a sardonic metaphor for 1980s greed and materialism. 2001, The Others. <coughs> the year 2001 was dominated by international productions. Ginger Snaps, a Canadian film, gave us a fresh take on teen horror. You smell yummy, what is that? Citrus, sir, antiseptic. Oh, I'm not sure. Are you crazy? It didn't make much of an impact at the box office, but critics raved about the whip smart writing, and the movie has since become a cult classic. The film that really had people talking, however, was Alejandro Amenebar's The Others. An English language Spanish production, The Others stars Nicole Kidman as a mother whose home is plagued with strange phenomena. What have you done with my daughter? Set in World War II, this tightly crafted gothic supernatural horror keeps you on the edge of your seat until the very end. In terms of twists, this is up there with The Sixth Sense. No one can make us leave this house. 2002, The Ring. And as soon as it's over, your phone rings. Someone knows you've watched it. When a film spawns as many imitators as this one has, you know that it's struck a chord. The Ring's massive success opened the floodgates for American remakes of Asian horror films. Seven days. It also inspired American cinephiles and horror fans to explore the world of J-horror cinema. Since it's been parodied in popular media for so long, it's easy to forget how terrifying The Ring was. The unsettling visuals and lingering shots sucked us into the gruesome tale. Samara also got under our skin in unexpected ways with her creepy crawling approach to murder. There isn't much gore, but the film doesn't need it. And while the cursed videotape premise might sound absurd on paper, Naomi Watts sells it with her committed performance. No! 2003, 28 days later. Hello! Zombie movies are a dime a dozen these days, but this remarkable film is an enduring testament to the potential of zombie cinema. A post-apocalyptic world populated by rabid, bloodthirsty humans is fertile ground for social commentary and captivating drama. It was the blood. There's something in the blood. Few people have done more with the concept than director Danny Boyle and screenwriter Alex Garland. The speed of the infected paired with the masterful cinematography makes the viewer feel as if they have too become prey to these rabid hunters. It's an extremely effective horror film that's further elevated by its deeply human characteristics. Don't blame 28 Days Later for the shuffling horde of copycats and Inspired. 
This movie remains one of a kind, even in a sea of imitators. <laughs> 2004, Shaun of the Dead. Oh my God. <laughs> She's so drunk. Maybe zombie flicks should be left to British creators. Between 28 Days Later and Shaun of the Dead, they've certainly given us some of the best undead films of the millennium. In 2004, James Wan changed popular horror for the gorier with the release of Saw. The influence of this horror film and its numerous sequels cannot be understated. You don't know me, but I know you. I want to play a game. But if we're talking about the best horror movie of the year, it has to be Shaun of the Dead. Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, and director Edgar Wright gave us a zombie horror film that was hilarious, delightfully original, and genuinely sweet. We're not sure there's ever been a zombie flick with a bigger human heart than this tale of two lovable slackers. Take calm, go to mums, kill Phil, sorry, grab Liz, go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for all this to blow over. 2005, The Descent. Juno, smart ass. As we were saying, Saw changed the horror landscape. It took exploitative body horror out of the basements of indie films and into the mainstream. In 2005, we got Wolf Creek and Eli Roth's Hostel. Both films divided critics with their willingness to revel in violence, but their influence can't be denied. The best horror film of the year, however, went further than skin deep. The Descent follows a group of women who encounter terrifying creatures on a spelunking trip in North Carolina. Many horror movies have put characters in tight spaces, but rarely has a film made for a more claustrophobic viewing experience. With its strong cast of characters and inspired scares, The Descent is a true gem. You haven't got enough rope! Damn! Turn around! 2006, The Host. Oh, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? In 2019, South Korean filmmaker Bong Joon-ho gave us the best movie of the year. Almost a decade and a half before Parasite, however, he also delivered arguably the greatest horror film of the year with The Host. This monster movie centers on a father's attempts to rescue his daughter as she's been taken by a strange aquatic creature. Like most Bong Joon-ho films, there are too many moving parts to this story to be properly summarized in one line. It alternates between being a serious monster flick and a comedic masterpiece. In short, it's exactly the sort of genre-defying horror film that only Bong Joon-ho could make. Two thousand seven. Wreck. 2007 was a very good year for found footage horror. While The Blair Witch set the standard years earlier, Paranormal Activity gave the filmmaking style a new lease on life when it made nearly 200 million on a budget of less than 500,000. While the film was a fun ride, Wreck takes the title for the best horror film of 2007, found footage or otherwise. The film follows a reporter and her cameraman as they navigate a viral outbreak. The virus in question turns the infected into rabid zombie-like creatures. <laughs> Set in an apartment complex in Barcelona, Wreck rarely lets up, making a cinematic experience that's at once thrilling, disorienting, and genuinely scary. 2008, The Strangers. What's your name? There were plenty of strong contenders in 2008. Let the Right One In told a vampire story the likes of which we'd never seen before. Cloverfield built on the found footage momentum of the previous year by applying the shaky camera film style to a story of unprecedented scale. We gotta get out of here. It's not safe here. But the greatest horror story told in 2008 was a grounded tale about home invasion. Monsters and vampires are all great, but there's something about the relatable and real threat of someone breaking into your home that cuts right to the core. In The Strangers, Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman play Kristen McKay and James Hoyt, a couple terrorized by masked intruders during their stay at a secluded cottage. It's simple, 
but very effective. Why are you doing this to us? Because you were home. 2009, Drag Me to Hell. Soon it will be you who comes begging to me. In 2009, Megan Fox and Amanda Seyfried starred in the violent and lustful Jennifer's Body. Though some felt that that film fell short of its potential, screenwriter Diablo Cody and director Karin Kusama undeniably gave us something special. I am going to eat your soul. The honor of the best horror film of 2009, however, goes to Drag Me to Hell. Director Sam Raimi first made a name for himself for the 1981 film The Evil Dead. It was a real pleasure to see him return to his horror roots, as this supernatural tale of a cursed loan officer proves Raimi has not lost his touch for solid scares or campy moments. It might not be as gory as the director's earlier efforts, but Drag Me to Hell isn't stingy with gross effects. <laughs> 2010, Insidious. James Wan might have lost out to Shaun of the Dead in 2004, but he claims the title for 2010 with Insidious. Although it's sometimes overshadowed by the director's bigger franchises, Insidious is a tightly crafted and terrifying film in its own right. Horror flicks often suffer from lackluster acting, but armed with the likes of Rose Byrne, Patrick Wilson, Lynn Shea, and Ty Simpkins in front of the camera, this supernatural story has got the talent to sell its scares. This film proved that James Wan is every bit as handy with a haunted house as a hacksaw. Darren Aronofsky's Black Swan was also a top contender in 2010, but ultimately Insidious wins out for delivering one big fright after another. Why would you do that to me when you know how I feel about that? 2011, you're next. Hey, 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 hey. It's okay. It's okay. Horror is a genre that tends to lean on cliches and stereotypes, but every now and then, a film comes along that takes horror conventions and turns them upside down. The final girl trope has been around for decades, but while ingenuity and a fighting spirit has often been a hallmark of the trope, we've rarely seen a heroine flip the script quite like Aaron in your next. Grab anything sharp or heavy that might make a good weapon, but you need to do it fast, we've got to be upstairs. When a trip to visit her boyfriend's family becomes a fight for survival, Aaron quickly turns the table on her attackers with ruthless efficiency. Bloody, creative, and blessed with some moments of pitch black humor, your next was a breath of fresh air for the slasher genre. Can I ask you something? How did you learn all this stuff? Well, I had kind of a weird childhood. I grew up on a survivalist compound. 2012, The Cabin in the Woods. Places, everyone. We are live. There are horror films that subvert expectations, and then there's Cabin in the Woods. Honestly, Scott Derrickson's supernatural film Sinister should have been a shoe-in for the best horror film of 2012 with its chilling attic full of ghosts. But The Cabin in the Woods is a horror film in a class of its own. What begins as a paint-by-numbers teen horror flick quickly gives way to an impossible level of depth. And we mean that literally and figuratively. You're not seeing what you don't want to see. Puppeteers. The further down this rabbit hole you go, the crazier it gets. Equal parts love and hate letter to the horror genre, The Cabin in the Woods is a laugh out loud dissection of genre conventions. 2013, The Conjuring. It talked to me. It said that it wants my family. Scoring his third mention and second win on our list today, James Wan has arguably made no greater contribution to cinema than The Conjuring. This supernatural and impeccably crafted film was reminiscent of classic horror and made for the perfect haunted house story. Inspired by the lives of actual paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren, The Conjuring follows the husband and wife team as they attempt to help the Perrin family. This dark entity has latched itself to your family and it's feeding off you. Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga are absolutely captivating as the Warrens. Lily Taylor and Ron Livingston similarly deliver as Carolyn and Roger Perrin respectively. The scares are intense and the characters really make you care about them. If you prefer a more ambiguous selection from the year, 
Under the Skin also deserves a shout out. 2014, The Babadook. If it's in a word or it's in a look, you can't get rid of The Babadook. How much terror can a character from a children's storybook really inspire? Well, in the case of Mr. Babadook, arguably more fear and dread than any other horror movie monster in 2014. The Babadook is an Australian psychological horror film centering on a widowed mother and her young son. The line between delusion and reality is very thin in this movie. Up until the credits roll, you're never sure if this family is being literally tormented by a supernatural force or if it's all an elaborate metaphor for grief and loss. Maybe both are true. However you interpret the film, The Babadook is a visceral experience. You're trespassing in my house! Honestly, the only other film that could hold a candle to it in 2014 was It Follows. 2015, The Witch. I am that very witch. When I sleep, my spirit slips away from my body and dances naked with the devil. Has a horror filmmaker ever made a more confident or meticulously crafted debut film than Robert Eggers? While 2019's The Lighthouse was yet another masterpiece from the director, it's hard to imagine that film would have gotten made if he hadn't first knocked our socks off with The Witch. Set in 16th century New England, this supernatural horror film follows a family of settlers who have been shunned by their community. Their bad luck takes a turn for the sinister, however, when their baby suddenly disappears near the edge of the woods. Boo! The family is seemingly beset by forces of evil in this fascinating look at faith, superstition, and sexuality. It's a beautifully shot horror film that strikes a chord with surprisingly little gore. It is you! It is you! I'm your daughter! The devil is in me! 2016, Raw. In 2016, Don't Breathe and Hush both gave us inventive twists on the home invasion genre. Although both movies made quite the impression, Raw is the film that really stole our hearts. This French horror film, written and directed by filmmaker Julia Ducourneau, centers on a young woman's descent into seeing people as literal snacks. Although she's a vegetarian when she first enters veterinary school, Justine soon develops an insatiable craving for flesh after a hazing ritual. And they say that there are no new stories to tell. A strangely sensual and artistic horror film, Raw is a must-watch for anyone sick of horror cliches. Consider yourself warned, though. This movie is not for those with a sensitive stomach. 2017, Get Out. Do they know I'm black? No. Should they? Had you told us a year or two earlier that funny man Jordan Peele would give us the best horror film of 2017, we would have probably laughed. Although Pennywise the Clown might have won at the box office in 2017 for good reason, Get Out got nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. If you ask any film historian, they'll tell you that's an extremely rare honor for a horror film. Get out! Yo! No. Yo! Chill, man! Get out! Chill! 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 Chill man. A scathing indictment of white liberal America and their complicity in racism, Get Out is brilliant, funny, insightful, and for all its horrors, an extremely fun ride. They're probably abducting black people, brainwashing them, and making them slaves. It's not just the best horror film of 2017, but arguably among the greatest movies of the decade. I mean, I told you not to go in that house. 2018, Hereditary. I just don't want to put any more stress on my family. 2018 was a really solid year for horror. John Krasinski blew cinema goers away with his heartfelt horror film, A Quiet Place. With Mandy, Panos Cosmatos finally found the perfect vessel for the unbridled energy of Nicolas Cage. Hereditary, however, was more than just a great horror film. Its debut marked the arrival of a horror artur with few equals, Ari Aster. While all of the films on our list today are scary, Hereditary feels like the exorcist of its generation. It terrifies and disturbs in new and unexpected ways that we couldn't previously imagine. I wish I could shield you from the knowledge that you did what you did. The performances of Tony Collette, Alex Wolf, and Millie Shapiro are incredible, and the story will keep you riveted even as your mind screams to turn it off. 
please stop! Stop making sense! You're scared me! 2019, us. Now the cops are already on their way. Jordan Peele ruled horror in 2017. In 2018, that honor went to Ari Aster. In 2019, both filmmakers gave us their follow-up films, and the winner was, well, horror fans, Ari Aster once again threw the rulebook out the window with Midsommar. He gave us a deeply disturbing film that, strangely enough, plays out almost entirely in a brightly lit pastoral environment. Jordan Peele cranked up his signature combination of dark comedy with heady themes to even greater heights with us. The shadow had to do it all. Self. A wild ride from start to finish that warrants multiple viewings. Us confirmed Peele was a master of horror. While the same can be said for Aster and Midsommar, Us arguably has the more replay value of the two films. We're human too, you know. Eyes, teeth, hands, blood. Exactly like you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 2020, The Invisible Man. Are you okay? I'll explain later. Just go, Emily. Go. Take note, this is how you bring old stories into the modern era. Written and directed by Lee Wanell of Saw fame, The Invisible Man updates H.G. Wells' classic science fiction novel for the 21st century. It stars the always incredible Elizabeth Moss as Cecilia Cass, a woman who believes that her ex is stalking her with technology that allows him to become invisible. Others don't believe her as the ex is supposed to be dead. He has figured out a way to be invisible. The film is mainly about abuse and the haunting effects it leaves on someone's psyche but it also works as a straightforward sci-fi tale about invisible people. No matter how you view it, The Invisible Man is terrifying. It's some kind of suit that Adrian has built, and it has cameras, and it somehow... What? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.